Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. We're at the Huntington Library. Uh, the name of this event was Gold on Your Bookshelf and was evaluating people's books and telling them what to look for. If it's fiction, you're looking for a dust jacket. Inscriptions by the author are wonderful. You're looking for a first printing. You would be uh, looking for scarcity, which would be a small print run. You'd be looking for condition, uh, desirability, age, somewhat. But edition is very important whether it's a uh, first printing, a first edition. I think I came to today's presentation because I'm a bibliophile. I love books, I love to read. Um, I, when I saw you know, the, the notice about this session, um, I was interested in learning what is it that makes a book valuable. But I think I just, I just love books. I still love the feeling of a book in my hand. One of the books I had is uh, The Last of the Mohicans, and I thought it was, it was printed, I believe, in the, uh, in the 20s. But it is a library book, and it is annotated. Uh, and it's also not in really great condition, so that book is not valuable. But I did have a book called Little Witch that is uh, out of print, and that was written in the 50s. Probably is a little bit more valuable because it is a, it is a sought after book. I've loved books from the time I was a young child, and I just keep them and I save them. And some of the first editions I have of famous authors I think have become valuable now. That's why I was curious about this program and uh, how to determine their value. But I would say I'm more of a collector than I am a seller. I don't think I've ever sold a book. I like to collect them and keep them, especially famous author first edition. I have three or four first edition Ian Flemings. I can't quite remember which titles were the first editions, but that would be one example. The least valuable are books that are part of a series. The collected works of Dickens, say and you have a volume of that. That is very far from the original. And it's just, um, I don't know, maybe worth $5, even though it might be over 100 years old. So age is not a determining factor. The books that will never be valuable are mass market paperbacks, travel guides, cookbooks, uh, how-to books, self-help, that kind of book. I'm not a collector, uh, but I do have a lot of books, and, and we inherited uh, the books from an old house, and there are a lot of old, over 100-year-old books in that collection, and that is why I was sort of interested in finding out if any of them were worth anything at all at this time, and some of them are. I'll go home and do a lot of research based on what she's told us, you know. Just because I have a lot, lots of books. I have a thousand books I just found out not too long ago. I had a first edition from O. Henry I wanted checked out. Just know the value, interest in it to keep it on my bookshelf. I mean, if it's the million dollar book, yeah, sure. <laughs> but basically just to find out and to keep it on my bookshelf. There are some books that I read when I was a child that I want to hold on to uh, that meant so much to me. Um, that's why I, I still ha I held on to this book. Uh, a woman actually asked me if I would be willing to sell it uh, when I showed it to her, uh, and I told her no. <laughs> no, I'm not willing to part with it.